three rows from the back, and the gentleman right at the back, and then this gentleman with the papers at the front, please. Right, my, my name's Ken Muller, I'm Assistant Secretary of Islington, NUT, the National Union of Teachers branch in Islington, and I represent about 1,300 teachers. And clearly, teachers and other school staff are very concerned about cuts being made in the fire service, which could endanger their men, uh, themselves and the children they teach. Now, we're told that only 26 seconds are going to be cut off response time. 26 seconds could be the time a roof takes to fall in on a classroom for the children. It could be the time that three children suffocate. Now, it might not seem very much to the Commissioner, and I don't know how much he gets paid to say that, but it could be a lot to the children and their parents if, if kids die as a result of these cuts. And I'd like to ask, why are these cuts necessary? 35 million have got to be paid back. Our Conservative councillor or authority members tell us these cuts have to be made. Why do they have to be made? They only have to be made so that we have to pay to bail out the banks that gambled and brought down our economy. And I say, and my members say, we should not be cutting our fire service, endangering our children, endangering people who live in this incident in order to bail out the bankers. I've got one question. Why is it the Commissioner, who's clearly committed to providing a fire service to, to Londoners, why is he coming up here and trying to justify the unjustifiable? And I'd like to say to him, rather than trying to do that, he should get up and say to Boris Johnson, I'm not prepared to make these cuts, they endanger the lives of London, and I will resign rather than make these cuts. Gentleman in the middle there, so yeah, you, yeah, you, please, sir. Yeah, the, the mic can come down to the middle of the chairs here, please. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, I'm Barry Edwards. I'm a councillor here in Islington in Holloway Ward. Um, um, Terry knows me, and uh, it might not be surprised if I say that I actually think that you were wrong in saying that they're making, the commissioner has made the best of a bad deal. Um, they've done what they need within the parameters that they were given by the um, mayor, and so therefore, really, I think the target here shouldn't be so much the commissioners as um, the mayor and the here, the assembly member, clever. So I'll address you, sir, and you can take it back to yourself and your boss. Um, the obvious difference between what's been happening here in Islington, because like, as you say, we're all public services, we're facing cuts in the amounts of money we're getting from central government. But the big, one of the big differences is that most local authorities, while deciding to not increase their council tax, haven't reduced it. So quite clearly the decision to cut 10% of it, the mayor's council tax is a political decision and times are being increased for a political reason. You think that saving a few pounds over the course of a year is more important than the response times. So, yes, I agree that uh, the number of people being killed in fires is reducing. I had uh, a fire on the ninth floor of one of the blocks of flats in my own ward two years ago, and a person died in it, despite the fact that the engine got there in four minutes from the station. Now, I presume those people, but you could be extreme, you could be sensationalist and say that those people who do die will at least have the comfort that they died to save you your 70p a week. But I think we can look more carefully at the way we're required to make the government cuts, the government cost reductions, without your extra 10% on top of it, in the way that boroughs like Islington have done. And we have looked at lots of cost saving measures. Yes, a lot of the things that the Commission has said about the ways in which we can look at sprinklers, fire safety, road safety, etc. Yes, all that should be done. Yes, I welcome the reduction in the number of senior officers. It's in one of the forms of cuts that we've done in Islington. All those should be done. But when you look at the frontline service, the thing that we have tried to commit ourselves to do is no reduction in frontline services. And I think that you, to do that is harder 
that to simply say we're making a cut, not 12% on it. And that's what you've chosen to do, it's not what we've chosen to do. If you look at, for example, co-location, uh, if you look at the idea that the mayor, after all, runs both the police and the fire service, he could possibly think of operating them out of the same bases. He can look at whether or not the back office services, everything from IT to the canteens, could be shared. All these are ways that you can save money without reducing frontline services, and it's the sort of thing that Islington has done. I'm just wondering if there's any other examples. There's a, you mentioned slightly, I had a very quick look through the plan since arriving here, um, the use of uh, a small number of small quick response vehicles. That's the sort of thing that the ambulance service has been doing for some years now, um, and it certainly could be looked at whether or not the type of vehicles we're using now are the most appropriate ones, and in the long term, whether any sort of changes should be made to a mixture of vehicles. But the important thing is not to reduce the number of bases, is to ensure that there are always vehicles that can respond from places near to people's homes. And I would echo what uh, Mr. Dismore and Stacey have said about high-rise places in the centre of London. We've got lots of up to 17 stories here in Islington, including the one where we had a fire recently. There are plans on the book for private sector housing developments that go up much higher than that. We need to look at the way that those places in central London are responded to. But I believe that with careful looking at the, the type of way you respond, you could actually, without making your extra 10% political cut, find ways that do not reduce the frontline services. Okay, thank you very much. I'm uh, Councillor Paul Conbury from Islington Council. I'm an executive member and cabinet member responsible for community safety here in this bar out here. I want to uh, cordially welcome the uh, top panel to this bar, as Terry has uh, already done on behalf of the leader of the council. Um, I want to tell you this Islington Council, uh, rather like Kensington and Chelsea and many other bars affected by these cuts, has voted unanimously not to support the cuts in the fire service. So simply are not convinced by the evidence which has been put forward by the senior management of the fire authority. And I want to ask people that are present here this evening on the panel just to remind themselves about what happened in October of last year. October of last year, a document was produced, this is one particular page from it, which was leaked um, by Assemblymember Dismore on the 17th of October in plenary session, and it is a page which describes a preferred option for savings across the fire service, which would have closed 17 fire stations and taken out 36 appliances, and which the Commissioner told the fire authorities would, here I quote, have 26 boroughs meeting the first pump target, no change, 32 boroughs meeting the second pump target, an improvement on the current position, and that was described the next day, that day, in City Hall, in a plenary session, by Boris Johnson, as being a plan which would not reduce safety and that Londoners would continue to be protected from fire as they are at the moment. And James Cleverly himself said, this is a very key quote, that any cuts in the number of fire stations or fire engine vehicles would not slow current response times. Well, the evidence presented to us over the past several months demonstrates that that is not true. Response times will worsen. And the important point about that very interesting <coughs> change the authority made, from deciding to cut 17 fire stations down to 12, when asked candidly, what justified the retreat from 17 to 12? The answer given to me, perhaps a little too candidly, was well, the government cuts weren't quite as bad as we thought they would. So the fire plan that's being debated now for consultation is not a strategic plan that gains efficiencies and creates reform in the fire service. It simply passes on a central government cut to the fire service every single penny of it. And as Barry Edwards has said, it is outrageous 
that an authority, the GLA, which has a budget of over £60 billion pounds a year, simply passes on a government grant cut to the fire service without looking at a single penny of its expenditure right across the GLA piece. The reason why the last government created the GLA as a large entity which included the fire authority was precisely to allow big strategic decisions on priorities to be made and to shelter the fire service within the totality of the GLA budgets. And the second thing which flows from that decision the fact that it is budget that is pushing these numbers on this plan is how does it play out? Well, I'm also a councillor representing Caledonian Board in this regard. Caledonian Board, along with Clerkenwell and Mildmay, will suffer significant worsenings of the response times, the average response times. My ward already fails on the six minute target for a first pump, and it will worsen. There will be three wards in this borough which will fail on average a six minute first pump target. And that's scandalous. That is not, James Cleverly, um, a slope that, that, that is not what you promised. You promised that the cuts would not um, result in slowdown in response times. It is very clear that it will. The final thing I want to say is this. We welcome, as an authority here in Islington, the incredible work that the fire service has done over the last 10 years to significantly reduce the number of fire incidents and hoax calls and all of the other things which um, concern the fire service. But the point is, fewer fires, <laughs> it doesn't take, it isn't faster to get to the fires that do happen. You still have to travel one mile or two mile or three mile to get to those fires. It doesn't shorten the distance between a fire station and an incident. This plan will put Islington residents at risk and we say unanimously that is the wrong thing for the fire authority to be proposing to do in our bar.